Hi, so today on Vulnerable, I have my friend Paul Butcher. He is an independent recording artist as well as a formal child actor, and we get to chat with him about his life, his journey, his family, and his new single, Horses. Oh my goodness, Paul, thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for having me. Because um, I, I, I was wanting you to come on, and you were like, you know, Let's do it when you're in studio. Yeah, I know. You wanted to do Zoom, but I don't know. I can't I can't resist <sighs> I the personal connection with you. <laughs> no, but wait, thank you. But also it's true. Like there, there's something like so you're my um you're my last for today. And it's like I've had such a great time, like yeah. really being able to like sit. Yeah. And like talk. Totally. I think I'm a better interviewer. Yeah. When I'm in the room. Hundred percent. I mean, you feel each other's energy, and it's just a whole different experience. I feel You're like. like looking at flesh. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's the flesh. It's not the celluloid <laughs> plasma screen. I can't do the plasma. I need flesh. Yeah. Like while my kids run around, and yeah. like I'm like you know, it, it it it's. Yeah. I also think it's the setting because like just being in like your apartment or house or wherever, it's like okay, nothing's changed. What do you so. think of the set? I love it. I'm actually so impressed. Right? I think it's awesome. I'm yeah. so excited. We originally had a different kind of set that was more flat, but like the reason no, why we're doing like it like this, this is like, yeah, you know, this is it. This is it. I'm really, really impressed with our team. <laughs> Same. I'm impressed by you as thank, always. Oh, thank you. So yeah, let's let's catch up. Yes, please. So when I when I last saw you, we were having fun on uh, my YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, we were making some content together. I reached out to you, I think, via IG, and you were so sweet. And, oh, thank you. And you were like, hey, let's let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. And um, I remember us shooting a TikTok yeah. about your song. <laughs> yeah, I know. I feel like, and it doesn't, we don't plan it, but I feel like every time you reach out, I might have like a song. That oh, I my got. gosh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, you have a song right now? Yeah, it's called Horses. I just dropped it Uh two weeks ago maybe i don't know by the time this airs when it will be but yeah um yeah and you then message me i'm like this is so weird i feel like we're on the same schedule so <laughs> can we talk about though like your amazing social media presence your branding oh, thank you just in general though like you also have sort of like other people that you collaborate with mm -hmm. Um, who are, you're extremely inclusive. And like, I Thanks. find that you, the, the people that you're working with are super interesting, talented Thank folks. Thank you. So how did you come into the brand that is you now? Because oh it is gosh. very different. It's a bit more spicy. Yes, yeah. It's what would you call your brand now? <sighs> See, that's so hard because I don't even really think about having a brand. And I've actually been told that I should probably like narrow it down. Okay, by um, who? Just by multiple people. Not like even like my personal team or anything. Yeah. Just like friends, family members, team members, all the people. They're <laughs> Trying always, to put you in a box. Yeah, and I, I just, I'm one of those people that I get bored really easily. Mm -hmm. So I would, I just, I like to change it up all the time. But like currently, I just, I feel like it's just more like me, I guess. Just yeah. being like authentic and um, sometimes I feel sexy and I want to do sexy stuff. Sometimes mm -hmm. I feel like dark and broody and I want to do that. And sometimes I'll do like super quirky, weird, funny stuff. And yeah. I'm just like... That's just kind of how I am as a person, though. Got it. Yeah. Okay. And and honestly, TikTok thrives in all of that. Like, yeah. I think that's why I like TikTok so much. It's yeah. just like I don't feel like there's like these walls of like I have to create some like Instagram feed. or I love Instagram, too, but it's like that's just like more of like, you know, you build an aesthetic. Yeah. Whereas like TikTok, and you're kind of locked into that yeah, aesthetic. Yeah, exactly. And if you, yeah. it's like a lot of effort to try and change that aesthetic if you want to. Um, whereas like TikTok, I feel like I could just, it's like the Wild West. I could do whatever. I know. That's how... <laughs> That's how I feel too. And for me though, I I know my demo is like mostly female mm -hmm. and um uh millennial a lot, right? Me. I'm your, I'm <laughs> and your you? Demo. Oh my god, thank you. I, love I hope all your so. Videos. Oh my gosh, thank you. <laughs> and like, you know, so so yeah, it's like I have I have somewhat of a, a I guess eclectic demo, but like I think a lot of my users do use Instagram. And so yeah. I feel like I'm cheating on Instagram by having so much fun with TikTok. That's how I feel. I know, right? That's I'm like, like, she's my side piece, but I'm uh, serious. <laughs> That's she's literally my only how I side feel. piece. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you can, you, can, you can go on TikTok. Everything can go on TikTok. Oh. Like everything my mind even kind of thinks I of. even repurpose yeah. my TikToks for my reels. Yeah, that's what I do too. Instagram used to be my wife and I just gave her my sloppy seconds now. That's what I do. I'm like, oh, this did well on TikTok. Um, I'll put it on Instagram. I found that certain things that are doing well on my TikTok don't. Yeah, they, they, they don't translate because the things that do well on Instagram are more basic bitch stuff. Yes, totally. Like if I just do like quirky, funny things that are very like about like I don't know decor. I don't know. I can't even explain <laughs> it. I just noticed that the more basic bitch kind that of is humor a hundred percent is working true. on Instagram. Yeah, for me, it's like if I do something like weird or or 
strange or quirky or even just like a little like extra on TikTok mm -hmm. and then I translate over to Instagram, people are like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> They're like, what is that? Yeah. But if I like on Instagram, like you said, if I just, it's like photo shoot and it's like something simple of just like me getting my picture taken and it's a yeah. video and then show the model pictures after, everyone's like. <laughs> 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 but then on TikTok, if I post that, skip exactly like, it, like, does that. so they're definitely very different, different people yeah it's almost weird how it's like you're you you have to envision the face of the person that you're posting for yeah. in a weird way yeah that's a good um way to look but at. yeah so and and then i mean like but you're probably you had vine and stuff like that like no, did you not get into that i had that? like six vines that i ever posted they okay were, they were funny i was funny you but i funny. only did six of them <laughs> he was funny <laughs> i think they were funny i agree i think you're funny thanks i try i go back and forth <laughs> humor's hard yeah um, but it's more like my mood. Sometimes I'm like, oh my God, I want to be so funny and yeah. ridiculous. And then sometimes I wake up and I'm like, I want to be really serious and taken seriously and broody. And then, I all, love then all of a sudden I'm like, wait, no, I don't. <laughs> what sign are you? Aquarius. Oh, interesting. My husband's an Aquarius. Oh, nice. That's interesting. And What's then your... I have an Aries moon. Aries moon. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. You know, for those of you listening. <laughs> Take a, a moon. trip with us. Down yeah, down so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your moon is what you really are. Mm -hmm. Your rising is what people perceive you to be. Mm -hmm. What are you what is your Um they're both Aries and then uh my main sign's Aquarius. Whoa, your yeah. rising is also an Aries? Yeah. That is interesting. Yeah. So I'm like because I I'm correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. Aquarius is like, you know. Go with the flow, uh -huh. like forever changing. Actually, very eccentric. Yeah, like, uh, does a lot of uh, different exactly things in their life, which is totally a part of me. But then Aries <laughs> is like strong, like fiery, ambitious, ambitious and also like, sensual. Yeah, <laughs> sensual. You said it, not me. <laughs> uh -huh. I am a Pisces Aries cuss. Oh, nice. Uh, which means I'm a hot mess <laughs> and uh, bold about that, I suppose. <laughs> and then I'm a Gemini rising. Oh my gosh! That's how people see me. I don't think of me as a Gemini. Are you a crazy Gemini? Uh, no, no, no. Rising, though. Oh. Like what people would perceive me as is a Gemini. Oh, okay. That's my rising. And then okay. my, I'm a Taurus moon. Mm, mm, mm. So that's like that how I really sense. am, yeah. I guess, is that anchoring. Yeah, that totally makes thank sense. Because I always feel like really comfortable oh, <laughs> around you. Oh, shit. Wow. <laughs> thank you. Um, and speaking of comfortability, so, so basically... We all, you know, everyone like grew up with you and me, I guess, as yeah. these like siblings, and uh, I, I bet we were like typecasted, yeah, for a long time. Yeah, um, I think so. I yeah. think that's like the beauty and the curse of being like a child actor is, you know, everyone sees you as this like one character, and I think only to like the past couple of years now, people are saying like my name. Oh, <laughs> like, oh my God, it's Paul Butcher. Yeah. Rather than like, oh my God, it's Dustin. Mm -hmm. I think that has to do with TikTok and like social media. I'm like, mm -hmm. they see my name a lot more, um, which is super cool. I'm really grateful. But uh, yeah, for acting wise, I mean, I was lucky enough where I did a lot of different roles. I did uh, like yes. Criminal Minds and I did- uh, Paul, yeah. Totoro. Uh, yeah, my name is Totoro. I'm sorry, but like I listen to your <laughs> voice all the time. <laughs> That's actually, I get- notice for that so much yeah. that and meet the robinsons oh yes yeah i have people like that there's like a whole cult following i, I was gonna it. say like you should be on this other podcast that i do called i hear voices where oh it's God. like we're talking about animation and i would love to um <laughs> sign me up and like all that but i'm curious about yeah. um what was that like then going from that sitcom life or that series life to um to the, the doing animation and stuff. Was that um, kind of what you were doing after? Zone? No, I mean, I kind of did it all throughout. I was in Avatar. I did, I've done so many voiceover stuff. So wow. I kind of just did that during, cause like it's hard to film multiple things while you're on a show, but mm -hmm. like voiceover is so easy cause it, it takes like a couple hours. Sometimes yeah. driving there takes longer. <laughs> right, 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 right. That's true. Um, and it's so fun. I feel like everyone in voiceover is just always in a good mood and it's just like probably nice the- community. Yeah, probably the best like acting community, I would maybe say. I completely agree. Yeah. That's something that I talk about over on I Hear Voices quite a lot with, and Will Friedell is my co-host. And um, we always talk about how freeing it is yeah. to be behind, um, you know, yeah. a microphone and and sort of uh, given the the ability to play, like just be a kid you know, put a voice to this character and there's like nothing, there's no wrong answers kind yes, of thing. Yes, totally. Yeah, you just get to have fun with it, I feel like. And yeah. Yeah, there's, no one cares about looks or anything. It's just like all positivity. I mean, I don't think I've ever had a bad 
voiceover experience. How could you, right? Yeah. It's like you're just in a room and they yeah. push the button when they're ready to talk to you. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's like yeah. there's a script. It's like there's no competition. Yeah. There's none of that stuff. Mm -hmm. He loved yeah. that. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think with acting, like like uh, live action acting and being a, a kid star, it's definitely a weird space. I mean, I think I was fortunate enough. I went to regular school. So I like got uh. to experience because we filmed in the summer. Um, oh, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So I got to still go to school. How many hours did you all work? Then in the summer, was it like 12 hour days or I think they didn't? So, whatever the kids allowed, I okay, forget. All right. Forget. Because I was like, now. you guys weren't union in a lot um, of ways. Like, you were after, but it wasn't like you were. We were still SAG, I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I can't really remember. Okay. <laughs> but I think yeah. we were SAG and. For a long time, Nickelodeon wasn't. I union. think when we did it, it was both. Okay. Um, But I can't 100% remember. But yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, whatever yeah, sure. the legal amount was, we worked. I want to sure. say it was 12 or maybe it was eight. It's like somewhere. Well, depending on your age. Too, yeah. I think it like goes from eight yeah, to it 10 might have, like, to then 12 evolved when you turn. as I got older. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, we had to do school on set. Mm -hmm. But then if it did overlap with school, because I think one of the seasons bled into school because we did 24 episodes instead of 13. Okay. Um, but the rest were in the summer and my school worked with me and I was really lucky to have that like kind of like alter ego life yeah of, like i'm a normal kid but i'm not <laughs> what'd you do this summer yeah <laughs> yeah exactly I hung out, like on set and yeah went to the kids choice awards and stuff <laughs> oh my like god that. i used to love the kids choice awards they so seem like much. they would be a lot of fun they were so fun i um, want to say oh i went to the teen choice awards I okay did not see, i didn't choice. like that one as much I'm it was sure. still good right. like it wasn't like there was anything wrong with it but the kids choice awards i don't know when i went i think it was like at its peak too. Oh yeah, what yeah. does that mean? Um, just like the performers they had, like Chris Brown performed at his like height of his career, uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, and then like Will Smith and Gwen Stefani, and just like the people who performed it was so. Good. It was like a moment. Yeah, like, when and you were it going. was everyone who was like at their pinnacle would yeah. perform there, and I was like, "What year was that? I want to say it was like oh three oh four or something like that, yeah. maybe a little earlier." <laughs> yeah, like it is weird. I see like all all of the people like that were big then, sort of getting to an age where they are looking older and yeah. acting older. And like, yeah. it's just like, it's like, oh shit. I know. We are older. No, don't say that. Okay, but we look, we look <laughs> I'm good. I'm a baby. We look good, we look good. <laughs> yeah. But it is, it's so weird. It's like, I remember somebody said something about like the Golden Girls were like, what was that thing? Right now, the Golden Girls were the same age as Sex and the City. Yes! What? Right now... The Golden Girls are the same age as the as the ladies that were in Sex and the City. I love Sex and the City. I know. I'm and actually, it's like you don't see them as Golden no. Girls, but it's like that was then we're talking about. Yeah, it's so weird. You're yeah. talking about now. Yeah. Like yeah. The new series. Yes. Yeah. The same age okay, got it. So not That's Sex so and the wild. City. It's uh, not what's that one called? Um, as not as you like, like it, that. just like and that. Just like okay. that. Got it. I love that show, yes. and I love the original Sex and the City. I've actually been binge watching it. It's like my late night show, where I like. Put it on right before I go to bed. It's a great show. Yeah. And I'm on the last season. What do you take from it. a show like that? Oh, I don't know. I think it makes me want to write a show like that. For and women? Yeah. What is? What do you feel like your connection to that experience is? I don't know. It's just everything's so glamorized. And mm -hmm. I don't actually think it's like too unrealistic. Yeah. It's like uh, I actually think there's a lot of like people would be like, oh, that doesn't really happen. But it actually kind of does. <laughs> it's like because yeah. it's based in New York and they're glamorizing New York and I just kind of like in my mind translated over if there'd be like an LA version um, and it it's like not too far off like it's with dating and stuff with dating yeah. with uh, just like the different character types and just like people you encounter and, yeah. and just like there's scenarios like it's not you think like oh this is exaggerated for TV but like living in LA my whole life I'm like it's not that exaggerated so yeah so living in LA what has that been for you? I know that your dad was a competitive NFL linebacker. Yes, yeah, he was in the NFL. He played for the Panthers, Lions, Rams, Colts, and Raiders. Wow. Yeah. Journeyman. Like, yeah. <laughs> and then and then he retired. Yeah, and okay. then he uh, he helps people who owe taxes at the IRS now. Amazing. So he yeah. pivoted. Yeah. What what did he think of your of your young fame? Um, I mean, it was interesting because I like I also feel like I have a, a different story than a lot of child actors of like I pushed it like I really wanted ah, to do it he wanted yeah. me to play sports and um I just hated it <laughs> well I mean it is really violent yeah I would 
<laughs> exactly. <It's> so <laughs> to see like a little kid clobber another little kid with the big helmets and everything when yeah. they start young. It just wasn't for me. I would be no. playing like soccer and they'd be like, you know, kicking the ball and accidentally kick my shin. I'm like, why are they kicking me? No, you're like, this <laughs> isn't like, okay. This is not mine if you like this. I don't want to do this. <laughs> yeah. So I was wow. like, I want to be in the TV. And they at first, like, they didn't want me to. So that is really interesting. So it's like you you almost like rebelled. Yeah. And then like one of his teammates was like, if he like really was begging you to play football when you let him. And I was like, and or he was like, I guess you're right. And so then they finally let me in. I got That's, an agent, an audition. And who then, was your first agent? Um, it was Innovative. Innovative was a powerhouse yeah. agency for young talent. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was them. And then it was like, ICM and yeah. like uh, who else was really big? Um, I mean, always William Morris and creative artists. But, I don't but know CSD if, was really big too for kids. Yes, for CSD kids specifically. Was I think they kind of probably still are. Yeah. Um, but youth, sort of the youth talent departments are always like, it's interesting to see, like you know, who's repped by who and whatnot. Yeah. Because then you can you become friendlier with the folks that are repped by yeah. your same agent. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I mean, I, I had a great experience. Abby was great. Um, yeah, good. And Innovative was great. Yeah. That's so, awesome. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, so anyway, so you basically were like, Dad, I want to do this. And, and he was, but he was like happy for your fame because he obviously yeah, was I super think, competitive. I and, think it's because it all boils down to like, I actually, I think I'm lucky enough that I had such a great experience. So like, I loved it. I was happy. Yeah, no, like, this is good. I, like, I wanted to do it. So yeah. it was just like, there wasn't, I don't think, any downside. Okay, anything. so he was like, there's no issue here. Yeah, like, there, this and, is great. and I still went to school. I didn't even like, I didn't even have to get homeschooled or anything. So there was really no like downside. Then then when I did, I did other projects, obviously, besides Zoe 101, like we mentioned. Um, and my school would always work with me. So like if I was out a couple of weeks or even a month. They would send me the work, and I do it on set, and then I just come back to regular school. So, which school was it? Um, it was for high school. It was Oaks Christian. And oh yeah, for, I've heard of it. Um, middle school, it was Calvary Christian. That's really great. That's very encouraging. Yeah, but I, again, like I feel like with with your dad, he must have like had a like to be traded or to work with that many different teams. He must have been really good. Yeah, and that must have taken a lot of commitment and competitive. Sort of a, that kind of a lifestyle. Yeah. Did I he feel, impart any wisdom when you started like I think auditioning? Um, probably in a sense where I get it from. Both my parents kind of have it where they anything they do they like. One, it's, they usually love it. Like that was like a whole motto thing. Like always do what you love. Ah. Um, that was like instilled from like a young age mm -hmm. with me of like, like make sure you when, when you do work you love it because then it doesn't feel like work. Yeah. And I like still feel that way. And that's why I still act and why I do music. And Interesting. I like never feel like I'm working. Obviously, like it's not rainbows and butterflies all the time. But like right, at the end right. of the day, like I like am having fun. It's your choice. Yeah. That yeah. you're still choosing. Yes. Because you chose it initially. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. really cool. Yeah. And I actually do think that makes a big difference. No, it does. Because there's so many people who... I mean, I've heard so many child actor horror stories of like my parents forced me, or I didn't want to do it, or yeah, or I, or, or or even worse is I didn't really consciously choose this. Yes, or like so know not, what I, I was getting into. Exactly, like yeah. I'm not really sure why I started doing it, kind yeah. of thing. I feel and like now it, it's just like a part of me that I continue. Yeah, that I can't like really aimlessly. Exactly. Like, yeah. I think that we locked into something. I think that it has to be a child that's like, I need to do this. Yeah, I like literally. They wouldn't let me do it, so that's like the big difference. Yes. Like, and I was like, please, I want to be in the TV, and like begged. Yeah. And then it was their friends who were like, if he begged to do a sport or like uh, outside activity at school or whatever, like you would be all for it. So right. he's begging you, like let him. That's great. And they did. And, and they I'm, did. I'm happy. That's so great. And you got with Innovative, which is like yeah. you said, like a really nice agency. So yeah. so then after so then you, you're doing all the voiceover work. What happened? Did you kind of age out of between stardom kind of stuff? Or yeah, I, mean, I don't really know what happened, I guess. I mean, like looking back, I think maybe I would have done things a little differently. Really? But what like would you have so, done like I mean, I did Zoe 101 and like yeah. had all this like success and everything, and I, I've continued on with it, and I've done a lot of projects even to this day. I just had a movie come out. Oh yay! I did two Netflix projects. Okay, so. hello. <laughs> we can see you everywhere then. Thanks, <laughs> but that's not the point. Um, like I feel like, but it might be good. I was so in love with like after I finished all that, 
um, with like school and my friends and mm-hmm. like I, high school and finishing that. You were I, choosing that. Yeah, I chose that. Got I think I, at one point, and like my parents never forced me to do anything, mm-hmm. so they let wow. me, and I took a lot of time focusing on school. I did school musicals, and it was really fun. And then I went to, I, I was like the baker and in into the woods. And then I did, I went to UCLA for college. And okay. I was like in a frat, and I like. What I, frat are you in? I was in CBT. Oh yeah, I love CBT. <laughs> yeah. CBT were always the nicest guy. It was uh, a football frat. In, yeah, yeah, at that's Columbia. how. Yeah, that's how ours was at yeah? UCLA. It's the football frat. How funny. Which is funny because everyone. Well, they like your dad's <laughs> in football. So you're yeah, in our frat. Everyone now. was like, uh, like. Six three and giant, and then I'm like there, and then the the one thing I did do is like you know like you have like pledge duties like oh after a party you like clean up and yeah. stuff, and I would always be like oh I have an audition I can't, <laughs> <laughs> I can't make it, oh, and like sorry, guys. <laughs> their nationals <laughs> when I like sick. joined announced that I was in it like before I finished my pledge thing, mm-hmm. so once they announced it I was like I'm not doing. Oh, I love it. I was like, I'm sitting back and enjoying. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, I was little. Oh, that's so funny. It was funny. UCLA is a beautiful campus. This is so nice. I had the best time. It was so, so fun. Yeah. So I I guess, yeah, I don't regret anything because I had the best time. That's what I'm saying. It's like you chose that part of your life. Yeah. People advocated for you and then they're like, we're going to, we're going to support you doing this. And then you had your your good experience. Yeah. And then you, and then you chose to do the plays in school. I'm curious, like what was that like to have been on like a big set and then go into the the, the amateur theater for your school? It was, so what's crazy is like, so the high school I went to is like, I, it's like Professor X Marvel like, yeah. high school. It was like one of those schools. It's so like, like karaoke here. Yeah, it's in, like um, super LA. crazy where like, I mean, I had all these famous people that went there and their kids went there. Mm-hmm. And so like the, the musicals there, were like Broadway productions. Oh my gosh! Like, like wow. They had John, like we we did Into the Woods. I was the baker, and they had like people on stilts as trees, and like a what? tree that would turn invisible and show somebody inside. So it was what? just like it was like high production value. Yeah. And then at UCLA, I did. I was Roger and Rent, and then oh my god, like, I'd love to see you. Yeah, as Roger it was and so Rent. fun. I, I would love it. to see you as Roger and Rent, like when it, if it were to come back. Too. Yeah, I, I would. would love I would love that. to do that. It was like probably my favorite thing ever. Um, and they also had like a crazy budget, and it's UCLA. So. Yeah. Yeah, I never really like thought of it as being like small or um, like amateur because it didn't feel like it, I guess. Yeah, yeah. well, it wasn't. And yeah. also, too, here's the thing. It's like when you make the choice to be a part of something artistic, it shouldn't be motivated by the the money, Yeah, yeah. the transactional part yeah. of all of it, Yeah, which is something that seems to be like a through line in, in what you do in creating art right. and these moments on TikTok. It's, mm-hmm. like, it's like they are truly authentic. It's maybe very different from from video to video and what you're feeling yeah but each of those is a part of you yeah genuinely. yeah like you you saw a sound or a trend or whatever it may be or an idea popped in your head that you were like i want to create this so yeah there's like a reason you want to okay I think. yeah so when did you start making your own music like was it out of college um i mean i had <laughs> i know we talked about this too a little bit <laughs> yeah, too we did you brought it up i think on a, a previous show uh, when i was probably more of like rehearsed and you had this um, is more of like vulnerable you, yeah so. you showed don't go i think which oh, was yeah. uh it was like one of my first songs in that masterpiece of a music video <laughs> i remember it now yeah <laughs> how can i forget the hair yes the hair it was hair. amazing mm-hmm. um i love it i love every part of it <laughs> um mm-hmm. and then i did covers for a while and just covers like, were big yeah they were so on YouTube big. and that, stuff. Yeah, and I you were doing with, covers on YouTube. Yeah, I worked with uh, Kurt Hugo Schneider, and we did Pillow Talk, and I did Mercy, and a couple Zane songs, and and I had so much fun, and it kind of like taught me like how to be in the studio, and just it was to just, like use the studio. Yeah, like so uh, you were producing it yourself, not myself, not okay. entirely. Like I had a producer, but just like yeah. I got more savvy with everything. Yeah, and then um, I started doing. Uh, I started doing a little album, or like a, I guess an EP, with a, a guy who's like a pretty big like Emmy nominated producer, but it was, he ended up being like super shady. And oh no. I lost all my work. He tried to like extort me for money. Oh, you don't say the, uh, the music industry is. Yeah. I mean, I heard, characters. yeah, my, actually Abby, she once told me, mm-hmm. um, that the music industry is worse than porn. 
Oh, <laughs> that's something Abby would have said. Yeah, yeah. She, she was a don't hold back. I'm going to tell you. Yeah, I love that about her. But yeah, um, yeah. yeah she uh, she literally said that. And I didn't believe her at the time, mm -hmm. but I actually might agree. But I, I love music. Have you so. done porn? <laughs> yeah. But the first my first time experience, <laughs> uh, I must say. Wait, do you have an OnlyFans? <laughs> no. Would you ever have an OnlyFans? No. Come on now. You already do thirsty content. No, if I had an OnlyFans, it would be because I partnered them in some kind of like smart deal way. Yeah. And yeah. then I wouldn't ever do like uh, x-rated content though. you know dan benson do you know this guy he was in wizards of waverly place um i don't oh, okay see because he was disney and you're nickelodeon yeah and sorry. these lines do not cross <laughs> yeah we're here to break that if i like the only way i would do it is if i like had some song that was like called only fan like it like yeah. made, it was some kind of like purpose I feel you. but i wouldn't join and like do any x-rated content or anything like that yeah um it's just not my forte. That's so funny. I think because I was gonna I say, think, has your parent have your parents like oh, seen some of your social media stuff? Or are they laughing? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I feel like I mean, TikTok has so many guidelines. So anything that's like sexy on TikTok is still like PG. Totally. <laughs> like it's, it's a lot of like the in, like the innuendo and stuff. Yeah, and I think like you're really good about that. That's what I like. I I think like what makes people sexy is like mystery and mm -hmm. like not being able to figure out and like it's that like aura and it's like a vibe rather than like I mean obviously. If you're completely naked, that's one thing. But yeah. To be able to be sexy without that is a different craft. Yeah. And I like that. And you kind of put that into your music. Um, I, 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 I'm not gonna like self-proclaim that. <laughs> I'm but saying. It. Thank you. I'm I saying that you that. put that mystery in terms of. And do you write a lot of your songs? Yeah, or? I write all my songs. Oh my gosh, I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. are you finding your voice as sort of an adult? The more, obviously you had a bad experience. Yeah, but I mean, I didn't, then I kind of like quit music for a little bit because I was so disheartened and it yeah. was just like, I worked so hard on this EP and just to have it like all over money, which is like, and it's not money I owe, like he tried to extort me for more and it was okay. just a horrible situation. And yeah. It's just such a shady person. But mm -hmm. then I like, uh, I, I got away from that and then I took like a couple years and then producer friend was like, come on, you can't give up. And I was like, all right. And we were in the studio and that's, I wrote nothing, which is, uh, a, I just dropped a music video for it like oh, a, cool. a month ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, that, that song was about like, you know, just being at a low place where you don't want to like even pursue your dreams or do anything. Mm, it, it could be related to like love as well. But it, in this scenario, it was more just like, I felt nothing towards my passions. Yes. And I was just done. That sucks, man. But then the irony is me writing that song with this producer um, kind of re-sparked it. So like, but it was like a, like a poetry or a, a journal, a diary. Oh, okay. And then I was inspired again. And then now I have like a whole EP coming out. And so you found your love of music again. Yeah. Through, through this one experience with a producer or? I mean, I always loved music, mm -hmm. but I lost that spark. And then by doing this song, I found it again. I feel like I found like- You like little, took another chance? Yeah, I, I like decided okay. to, to be open to it again and I did it and that's I that's hard man yeah I mean yeah I'm just happy that I was able to do that and mm -hmm. get out of the rut and then now I have like a whole like category or um what's a category what's it called like a catalog yeah, catalog yes, thank you, you have catalog, a whole catalog. Of yeah songs that I haven't yeah. released yet but that I'm like in love with and that's I'm, so important I just released one of them horses that came out in August and uh, I have are you gonna go on tour um, I would love to. I think I would like to get all my songs out and do videos and like kind of build the hype a little bit more. Yeah. But then that would be like, I would love to do that. Yeah. yeah. So like, who do you, who do you take inspiration from? And like, who do you sort of feel like your sound is similar to? Oh God. Um, I really like Zane, like okay. his, uh, mind of mine album. Mm -hmm. Uh, I like Billie Eilish. Mm -hmm. Um, Melanie Martinez. Oh yeah. I like, isn't she like on tour with Drake? I have I no idea, actually. Okay. But, like, I'm just obsessed with her music and the way she writes. And, like, it's, like, kind of interesting and darker and poetic. And mm -hmm. they definitely take a lot from that. Um, and then Justin Timberlake has always been, like, my favorite artist since I, I was mean, a kid. I mean, I still have love for I Justin, love Justin him. Timberlake. People want to hate on him I these know, days. I know, I know. I don't know why. Yeah. I just, I, I, well, I, they're, like, uncovering things. And I, then I yeah. guess not liking what they see. But at the same time, I think, like... They, they're they're kind of coming after him for his like talent, which is like irrefutable. He's yeah, a I feel guy. like for me with artists and stuff. Yeah, I mean, personal life. I obviously don't want to um, support anybody that does anything I, I really disagree with. Oh, but of course. At the end of the day, like art, 
I'm like liking them for their art and mm -hmm. like his songs and how he's inspired me since I was a kid. It's just I I've always respected it. Yeah, he's got kind of like a stronghold on us. Are yeah. you a, are you a millennial? Um, I am. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I was gonna say you're not Gen Z. You're no. a millennial. You're me. Yeah. <laughs> we we are together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah. 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 Millennial millennials actually. There's like a clear so difference. Diff there's so different. So different. Like I'm actually what's considered an elder millennial. <laughs> You're our elder. I'm an elder. <laughs> you need pointy ears. Yes, I need like a big cane. Big cane, yeah. A cape, and I need to like walk slowly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, elder millennial. I kind of think it's dope. I, think I it, like being a millennial. I, I, I like, think it's like, because I feel like I'm still fun and trendy, yeah. <laughs> which yeah. makes me not sound like I'm fun and which trendy. Which is so cringe. <laughs> like when I say it out loud, I'm like, God, no, I'm not. Trendy, um, what? But like, I, I feel, feel like- you. <laughs> We said that when you came in, you were like, you look great. And I was like, I'm trying to keep up with the kids. Yeah, I feel like, you know, we still are like a part of TikTok. <laughs> yeah, we, like, we're part we of do TikTok. things, oh, God, I'm making myself sound so we're old, cool right we now. keep going. But yeah, I'm just gonna <laughs> lean into it. But we do things that the kids do. But- uh, Have you seen Charlie Puth on TikTok? Is it puth or puth? Oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm so old, TikTok. <laughs> I'm never going to call him anything different. That's the cutoff. Charlie That's the puth. Cut That's amazing. Wait, That's it's the not best thing puth? I no, it's puth. Oh, whatever. Um, it's spelled the same. <laughs> it's P-U-T-H. Puth. Puth. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best thing anyone's ever said to me. Okay, so Mr. I do Charlie, know Mr. Puth. Mr. Charlie P. <laughs> do you, uh, like when he does like light switch, and I and I remember yeah. when that came out, and he like song. does these cool TikToks that like yeah. sort of embody the sound and how he like produced it. Does that like does that like inspire you? Oh yeah, I like love that song. I think that's like brilliant. I think he's so smart. He's a millennial too, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. Think, yeah. I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, yes, he is. All right, cool. <laughs> Got confirmation that Charlie Puth is one of us. I can't even say it. It's Puth. Puth. Charlie, your last name is now Puth. Yeah. And you've got, he's probably gotten that his whole life. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! Uh, yeah, it's Y'all Christy can call Carlson, me out as... Ramino. Yeah, I know. I've gotten that my whole life. I get butter. Butcher, sorry, Butcher or Boucher. Boucher. Boucher is the big one. Like Bobby Boucher. Yeah, I like be at auditions because I think no one wants to accept the fact that it's just Butcher, like a meat butcher. Yeah. Um. So. But I, no, now the boys. He has a last. His name's Butcher, yes, and yeah. it's the coolest name. Nobody still. I still. Butcher get, is a dope. Every ass time name. someone reads it, like, okay, Paul, um, Boucher, and I'm like. <laughs> Butcher. It's just Butcher, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's just Butcher, bro. It's just Butcher. Yeah. Butcher's a dope name. I like it. You should do you should do a, a whole album called Butcher. I should. I would the buy Butcher it. Shop. Yes. Yeah. That would be the theme. Exactly. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, cool. And so you're inspired by folks that are millennials and then also like some of that new yeah. that new stuff. What yeah. are the new trends that are ex inspiring your art other than like like the most like really recent ones? Yeah, sure. Oh, God. What are your I favorite songs? I like millennials more than I like yeah. Gen Z. So the millennials that are currently making music? Yes. Okay. Like Miley Cyrus, I think, is just She's, insane. I saw her at ACL. Yeah. And she'll play like a lot of stuff that she did back in the day, but then she'll do it her way. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like really cool to see that. Yeah. I love it so much. I don't, there hasn't been, I like Lil Nas a lot. Um, I just, there's not, is he, but is he still a millennial? I don't think so. Yeah. He, he's super he's young. Gen Z? He's super young, but yeah. He's, I feel like but, he's right on the cusp. But I also think that he is like a lot of these folks that are doing all the Y2K fashion stuff. Yeah. Like a lot of the trends. I need so you, to be more fashionable. I, I like, don't know why you're beating yourself up. I love your shirt. <laughs> no, thank you. This is like my button down is like my normal style, but I see people like with whole like put together outfits oh, and I'm like, I don't to be know a how you're doing that. I bet. <laughs> well, this is why Billie Eilish was so cool, right? Yeah. Like when she came out and it was like she had. Um, she was doing all that stuff where she wasn't showing her curves and yeah. she was getting all that street cred yeah. for being very like anti-establishment in that yeah. way. But it still was so fashionable. It was. Yeah. She made it so cool. Yeah. I was really proud of her for doing that. Yeah. But then, so then how are, what, what do you feel like your relationship as being an independent artist now mm -hmm. and having had, you know, negative experiences oh, I know, with producers? I know, uh, I think she would be considered Gen Z. Yeah. I love Sabrina Carpenter. With like a passion. Sabrina Carpenter. She's on Disney. Yes, she, I love she's her. She's one of your sisters. Yes, I know. <laughs> See, we, I, that's why I was like, touch me so that we can you have a Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon Disney. Disney. We need to put our rings together. I know, right? Could you imagine? What would happen? Yeah. <laughs> she's great. I love her. I'm obsessed with her. Oh, okay. I, she just dropped an album called Emails I Can't Send and... <laughs> I just think it's a masterpiece. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like she's in that Taylor Swift, like mm -hmm. kind of journal punk. Totally. Like her and Olivia Rodrigo. Yeah. 
and um, and, and it's it's really it's really cool to see them sort of have their wings. Yeah, sort of she's spread. coming to a concert in October. I need to find a way there. <laughs> you gotta you gotta meet her. I feel like she, yeah, hit, she hit would me up with your Disney you. connects. I know, right? <laughs> she's very good friends with Danielle Fischel. Okay, who um, you know they were on the Girl Meets World show together. And from what I know, Danielle is like a mo- second mom to her. Cool. And um, and it, and it's really sweet to see, like you know, people like that growing up, and you kind of mentoring them. Or yeah. Having people. So, totally. is there anybody that like you feel like is in the business now that you kind of, I don't know, have a rapport with? That Either I someone, mentor, or that no, maybe that maybe me. somebody that mentored you, or somebody that, or there are younger people coming up that you sort of are helping. Mm. Or has anyone mentored you when you were younger? <laughs> I don't think so. No, damn it! <laughs> I'm trying to think. This I is feel a like, common thing, though. Mentorship I mean, is super important. I feel important. like everyone on my show, because I was 10 and they were all like 14 and 15, yeah. I looked up to because like, it was like, oh, I want to hang out with the teenagers. So sure. it was, I was always fascinated by all of them and okay. was like in awe. Um, that, yeah, like I just... Hard not to. Yeah. And I mean, then you're it's just like, like... It's like a kid wanting to hang out with the older kids. Like, you're it's literally like, the demo of Nickelodeon. Yeah. Like them at 14 really weren't the demo when yeah. you think about it. Yeah. Because they were looking at MTV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that you you were their demo for sure. Yeah. And... So that was... I think they... I definitely was inspired by them. I mean... As far as like actual mentoring, like I know them and they're mentoring me or I'm mentoring somebody, I don't think so. You kind of always have been like a free and independent spirit. Yeah, like. that's like definitely more my personality. I feel like like I just kind of, yeah, I'm an only child. So is that it? Is that why? <laughs> Maybe that I don't know. You're independent because you're only child. Maybe yeah. Okay. I don't. I don't know. I mean, I always love getting advice from people, but at the end of the day, I have my own vision, I guess, and and just. I'm a lone wolf. I love it. <laughs> I don't know. You are so moody and poetic. I love this. <laughs> Thanks. Um, but I mean, I definitely get inspired by a lot of people. Like, oh, it says you you talked about Britney and you love her. I do. I love. So she, you are a big Britney fan. She. Oh, oh my God. When I was on the show and we. Used oh my to God! Hang you were in her. the car with Britney going to dinner and the paparazzi <laughs> were chasing her. That yes, that definitely happened. Oh that, my God. Yeah. What happened? Um, I mean, I used to. I probably like hung out with Britney. Almost as much or more than even Jamie Lynn. Jamie Lynn. Well, she was busy on set. Yeah, I'm she sure. was busy on set. <laughs> yeah. And then um, when she wasn't, she would go and be hanging out with her friends back home. But uh, yeah, my friend, my mom and uh, her mom were friends, so mm-hmm. I'd see Brittany a ton, and she was just always like that person that walks in the room and you just she just glows. She's so sweet. So sweet. Yeah. So just unique just she's a star like she like is, literally right? they're like she's so captivating and i was just like i mean i was like 10 to 13 or 14 at the time like that range and i was just so in awe with her i remember yeah. one time i like and i gotta be like 11 i hadn't dated anybody or anything and i like we left their house and i was in the car and i was like crying and my mom was like why are you crying it's like i just want to find a girlfriend like britney <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I like literally she's like, like yes honey everyone else does she's too like, mm-hmm. <laughs> so does the entire world <laughs> like, oh, it's a normal response honey yeah that's so funny so I definitely like was so she kind of mentored you in a weird way in a weird way yeah she's like I mean, a big sister to yeah you. I mean I think all of them like all the people on the show yeah like, uh, her mm-hmm. like anyone in that category because I was so young like mm-hmm. even like meeting people from Disney and yeah. Miley Selena all of them like I was always like I wasn't like in awe like this kid who just walked around like but yeah, yeah. I you was just like cool. yeah I was still pretty cool um <laughs> but no I mean everybody was just I don't know I feel like it was a different time too everyone seemed so happy and mm-hmm. just everyone everything everyone was doing was so inspiring and mm-hmm. like the Jonas Brothers were awesome and right. I loved it all like, right yeah so your your experience of it was kind of like almost like it's really interesting so like I, I would be remiss if I didn't say, hey, like I spoke to Alexa and her experience of Zoe 101 is very, very different. Yes. Why do you think that is? Oh, God, I don't know. I mean, every, obviously every single person on earth has like a different experience. Very different vastly mindset, different mindset. Different. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. I do think a lot of it probably was the fact that this was like my passion and mm-hmm. nobody else's. So mm-hmm. like I really was inspired by everything I was seeing. I still am today. I, I direct and I write scripts and I direct music videos. I do everything like in the industry because I still am like in awe with it. You're in love with it. Yeah, I'm yeah. in love with it. But at the end of the day, it just because I'm in love with it doesn't mean like everybody here is 
is great. There's yeah. so many shitty people and yeah. there's so many and like I've been fortunate enough where I feel like I've been treated pretty good. Good. Um but there has been shitty people, but for the most part those people like the music producer. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. But I let it my mentality, I let it roll off my back. I feel you. I bless them and I move on. I feel and you. I go they'll they'll be taken care of. Okay. And like I and I've never had anything so traumatic that have, would like affect me on a deeper level. Everything's been like kind of surfacey of like like losing songs at the end. Of the day. It was hard because they're my babies and I love my yeah. songs and they came from me. Yeah, but okay. like it's not as deep as if like something happened on a on a more existential level. Yeah, I like, feel you. I feel yeah. you. I feel you. I understand your experience. I really truly see that and, for you. Yeah, and I everyone, believe that too. I don't I think you're really, like telling me no something that you don't believe. Yeah, and I had really good parents that like watched out for me and oh, they were on set with me. That is and, helpful. Yeah, and I, <laughs> I was advocate. very like uh, yeah. I mean, with Alexa, I know she has like a lot of a um, lot of feelings towards like bullying, and mm -hmm. she felt bullied on set. And mm -hmm. by I don't know her story. I don't know. That's anything. the thing is that's her yeah. experience from um, when she was young. Yeah, and I I would never want her to feel like you know secluded or bullied or left out. I feel like that's not you. <laughs> no, I mean, I was 10 at the time. Like, literally. And you're also a child. Yeah, I was literally 10. So like how, it's like people want to say like, oh, do you know Shia and how he would feel about XYZ? I'm like, dude, I have not seen them <laughs> yeah. in like a I decade and a I literally haven't spoken to her since uh, the second season of Zoe 101. Exactly, so, exactly. And when I was on the show, I had no problem with anyone in the cast. That's and I think thing. our one, so young. the one thing I hear from her is, you know, there was a party that I didn't invite her to. Okay. But, you know, I was 10. We're squashing <laughs> the beef. Yeah. Because it wasn't your party. No. It was a rap party. It was a rap party. You were handed I'm invitations. I'm not in charge of invites. I did not make the guest list. <laughs> I was 10 years old. You should not, by the way, you should not have been handing out those invitations. No. Somebody, I bet you pawned that job off to you so that they didn't look bad probably and like <laughs> me my go lucky self I'm, I, and You're I'm like, always sure I'll hand out yeah I'm like okay and I think yeah no you don't her, get one <laughs> yeah, I would never sure, what happened? I would never exclude anyone on purpose Aww, ever. to your party Alexa's yeah, to always my, like, yeah if I'm making a guest list never Done. am I a truthful person if she like looked at me and she was like hey do I get an invite I'm just like sorry I don't have one yeah no yeah I'm not gonna lie I'm you like, didn't sure. take pleasure in that I'm sure I know no Good. pleasure was ever taken I, I think that we want to villainize these kids that are growing up on set and I don't think we need to do that and I yes. think like we can move forward knowing that whatever might have happened to the kids it's like we we do need to sometimes look into like adult advocacy I 100% how agree. meaningful it can be that your parents were like so positive yeah sounds like a miscommunication it sounds like a miscommunication that, I know there was just... I, there was beef yeah. back then between people and different castmates so I didn't have any beef but... is there do you do you think that there could be a world where um there could could be like almost like um, no beef or drama on a on a children's set, or do you think that's just like oh, I think uh, I, I was like on our specific one. I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> but everyone has them though. It seems like every children's show and I even... mean, I think it's part of being a kid at the same time. And How can we help people the have kids? To, <laughs> right, but I mean, if you were in school, it happens too. There's yeah. cliques. There's there's different groupings, and yeah, it's just something as like like now as like an adult, like I like everyone i think everyone's like so unique and like yeah. ev like everyone is deserves respect mm -hmm. and i think i've always been that even as a kid yeah. but there's a lot of people and they're even as an adult now that are still clicky or still rude do you, what do you do still, when you see that clicky energy do you I, just kind of go in another way yeah i think it's the yeah. same like motto of like people who've like wronged me in the business it's mm -hmm. just you just bless them and move on and nice. like you don't have to fight with them you if you see something like they're being blatantly disrespectful to someone stand up for that person oh good and like face to face if you're witnessing it but if you're not if that's just like their character type just distance yourself hope that they'll change mm -hmm. um hope that they'll get told by other people and corrected and that the world will right will the shape wrongs. them right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah but it's not your energy and yeah. it's not your vision but i mean yeah i mean even people in this industry people from my show even mm -hmm. i i'm sometimes baffled at the fact that we haven't become peaceful adults oh but you are isn't it funny how the baby of the group has to become the adult of everybody <laughs> oh, thank you I, I, I definitely have my faults i'm not perfect yeah no worries um but yeah i mean yeah yeah there's just been so many instances from my own show from witnessing other people's show where i'm like yeah. how is this even happening why I are people like being excluded why I, are things going on like it was not your answer it's so easy to, to just have. include everybody or yeah. like communicate with mm. people and you just choose not to and i don't get it it sounds to me like you learned a lot 
in a positive way at a yeah. younger age and that you've taken the good from all of that. And I'm really happy to see that you're bringing it to your art. Thanks. And that you have a loving heart and Thanks. you've been so sweet. I just don't know how sweet. people can't like put <laughs> like, yourself no, in their really own frustrated. shoes. <laughs> like, why don't you want to like respect everybody? I don't know that answer, but I think there can be protections in place. And you can still say like no, or like if you don't want somebody in a project or whatever it yeah, is, like yeah. you can still have that. But yeah, of course, it's your money, it's yeah. your project. But or like if you disagree with someone on set, I don't know. I feel like there's always a way to work. Out. I think there is. Yeah. I think that there needs to be more people in position of uh, o only focused on advocacy. Yeah, that aren't yeah, like trying to tear production down. That aren't enemies of the state, kind of thing. Yeah, that are simply there to facilitate that conversation that needs to take place. Because obviously, the, those conversations aren't being had. Yeah. I, how does everyone find you? Obviously, horses. We're about to do a TikTok before I flee to the airport. <laughs> Paul got to be in studio, which just just light light of my life. Oh, here. thank you. Um, and so horses is your single, but you're not done releasing music because you have more before yeah. you go on tour. Yes. Yeah. Yes, okay. I have uh, Horses just came out. The Please. music video? The music video is not out yet. Ooh. I'm trying to decide what to do for it. I have a couple Come to Texas options. for I horses. I would love that. I would yeah. love that. <laughs> Go to Austin where I live. There's yeah. a lot of horses. Thank you, Paul, for Thank coming. You. Thank you for coming. And please go um, download Horses, listen to it, and use it on TikTok. Thank you, guys. Love you guys. Yay. That's always amazing being here. 